Okay, this is that black diamond stuff. I can't remember who sent this to me. Focus. Focus. I'm pretty sure Brian sent it to me. He sent me like three things. In, but I have it in the top trimmer. Right there. I just put it in there. So I'm going to try it out today. I'm going to try it today and we're going to see what happens. You guys know I don't ever record me weed whacking. So I'm just going to update you and let you know. But uh, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to find out. I have some heavy weed whacking to do today. So it'll be a real test. <laughs> Okay, this is ridiculous. So you guys got to see this. What a nightmare. See all that grass? That's a lot of grass. That's what I bagged today. It was really wet, thick, heavy grass. So that is all I ended up with in the Walker MT bagging grass. Okay, didn't clog up, no problems. This is the Walker B. I mowed five yards heavy wet thick yards i started off with this in the mt and i noticed this kept dropping clumps it was the deck was definitely holding way too much grass in it okay so i came and dropped this off at home and i picked up this now this grass you see here is from three quarters of a yard not even a full yard so just to give you a, a fair comparison that was from a bunch of yards five four five i think it was five we'll just say four just to be on the lighter side okay four yards see what walker does here this deck has a little indentation there and then open other than that the whole deck is open it is the best mower hands down for mowing wet grass. It doesn't hold in grass nearly as much. It throws it further. This is a 56 inch deck. It gets it out of there. They don't over baffle. So many new manufacturers are over baffling decks. Now take a look at this pile of crap. I'm not very happy with this mower. See how dirty it is? It just took me an hour and a half to scrape all this grass out of here. Look at all the baffles. Look at all the pieces that come up instead of just one oval deck. This is the 52. Instead of one oval deck, it has all those pieces that come up. Does it make it better? Some would say yes, and that's why they designed it like this. I say no, because the Walker B with the completely open deck cuts better grass wet, cuts better grass dry, and doesn't hold all the grass in the deck. Now, see this thing? Look at this thing that runs up to here. You know how much grass packs in here and holds in here? Like you wouldn't believe it. All the way down through this channel. Why is that even there? I have no idea. Maybe they'll save for airflow, who knows? But it holds grass in there, wet grass, and then it just drops out of the deck and leaves messes all over your lawn. Then there's this thing. Every mower I've ever had from Xmark to Ferris, um, even skag this is removable it's held in with two bolts and you can take this out not on this right deck it's manufactured in it's welded right in it's part of the deck so you can't take it out the only thing these are good for is it helps you when you're bagging grass but if you're not bagging grass and you just want to side discharge and throw it far you unbolt these and you take them out and you get better throw and it lets the deck clean out. But instead, it just holds it and it builds up to a big ball here. And as it builds up so much and the blade hits it, it throws it up further into the deck. So gets guess where in. this thing's going? I still love this mower. I love the way it cuts. It leaves a great cut when it's dry grass um, or lightly damp grass. And it's a fun mower to ride. But I'll tell you what, this thing is going in the back shed until spring is over. And I'm running those two walkers because this right cannot handle grass, wet grass, like that walker can. Because once again, like so many of these other manufacturers, they over baffled this deck. And that's a problem. You guys know me. I don't jump on the bandwagon with all these other guys. I don't care that 50 other guys on YouTube, the biggest channels, are all praising and preaching right mowers. You know, I, I'm not 
completely slamming this mower it is a phenomenal cutting mower in the right conditions and it is really fun and really comfortable to ride and i do like it a lot but is it good for up here in my area in the northeast i don't think so because it can't do what i needed to do in wet grass and from now the beginning of the season until hell i don't know probably the beginning of june or so mid-june grass is wet every day and you know until the end of may from april to may the end of may it's wet all day long and then almost three quarters of the way through june the grass is wet until 10 11 o'clock in the morning before it dries out so this mower would be good for a week or two in june july august if we're cutting it all and then september starts raining again september october november we cut and do leaves so it's not good for that so this mower is good two three months out of the year I'ma let you go It's like 70 degrees and I'm sweating and going through a lot of water but anyway those two parts you saw I set the camera up on those last week and uh, didn't realize it wasn't filming that was the day I think I made a video the next day or something or you know that was the day I made the video that short clip and I said that's all you get because apparently I left my SD card at home so that was the two parts I'd recorded, but now I have to do that last part you saw. If you look to the right, you'll see them cattails, and there's a dip. I go around that thing, and then I go along the whole back side of this building, which is what you guys saw last time. Um, so I'm probably not going to record that part. But uh, you guys have already seen it once. You'll see it again this year, but I'm not going to bombard you with the same thing every single week. Try not to, anyway. But those stripes that you could see further down that last part those are not my stripes very nice stripes but they're not mine the uh i think whatever company before before the company that bought the building i'm mowing now um i think the same company did all these buildings back here 
and uh, I don't know who it is, but I'm sure it's one of the bigger companies around here. Whoever it is, they leave laying grass all over the place. Um, I they've mowed that twice now. I've mowed this. I think this is the fourth time I've mowed this, but they've mowed that twice. They leave laying grass everywhere. They don't weed whack anything. The grass is like five, four or five inches above the curb line um, all along the curb, and you can see where the mowers went up to. And if you could see those electrical boxes on that last part, when you look past the sign, you see those electrical boxes. That's the divider point. That's what I go up to. The divider's like in the middle of that, and it's funny because they'll weed whack or from the middle of it around their half, and they won't weed whack around my half. In the very first week I mowed here, I just I was weed whacking there anyway, so I just went right around the whole thing. But they're pretty lazy, I guess. So whoever it is, they don't like to weed whack. But they uh, they did weed whack that part this week and only their half, but they still didn't weed whack any of the curb lines. I don't know. So check these out. You guys know that I've always worn shin guards in the summertime when I'm wearing shorts and weed whacking because uh, let's just face it, rocks and stuff flying up at your shins never feels good. And for years and years, I never wore anything. And I'd have all kinds of cuts and scrapes and everything else down my legs. When some people saw me wearing the shin guards, they'd tell me that I'm a wimp or a baby. But you know what? That doesn't make me a wimp. That just makes me smarter than you. But anyway, I was paying. I paid like 26 bucks for the shin guards. They've lasted me about three, four years. They're getting kind of worn down now. The Velcro and the straps on the back. But I watched a video that uh, Danny Lanier made a little while back, and I saw these. And they're on Amazon, and they were 25 bucks. So they're made. This webbing on the back or this netting allows you to breathe, which will make them a little nicer. And them shin guards are definitely lighter, and uh, it feels like a rubbery material, very nicely stitched. And the front is like a thick canvas, and they're called Comfort Trim, Trim and Comfort. But these, they just have uh, they're elastic, and then they have a Velcro strap. I'll show you real quick how they go on. So pretty much, you just on Velcro, and they slide. Well, I won't be wearing boots. I'll be wearing sneakers, what I usually wear. Up over like that. You put them over your leg, and you just pull that around and Velcro it. And there they are. They'll protect your shins. And then when you're, and they stay. See, the back of them stays vented, so you still get air. You won't sweat so bad in them. And then when you're done trimming, just un un Velcro it. Well, I'm pulling them off of boots, so it makes it a lot harder, but you just pull them off. Throw them back in the trailer or back in the truck. I think these are going to be really nice. And it beats those heavy shin guards all the time. 